guys, Tony here. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing really well. In this video, we're going to discuss five things that you can do to improve your home theater experience. So remember, if you're not subscribed to the channel, then hit that subscribe button right now and also like the video because it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. I'm looking forward to breaking these down, so let's get into it. Right, let's discuss acoustic treatment. So there are things that you can do to improve your home theater's acoustics for very little money and just a little bit of time and testing. So one of the things that you can do if you have a hard surface on your floor is to get a rug. Just whether it's a, a nice thick carpet or a rug, then that's something that will help absorb the sound reflecting off the floor. Another thing is if you have not put acoustic panels up on your walls, they are the most reflective surface in your room, generally speaking, as is the ceiling. So putting acoustic panels on your walls will go a long way in improving the reflection and the echo that you might be experiencing. This may include getting some egg carton shaped foam, which is readily available on Amazon, and it doesn't look the nicest in my opinion, but it does definitely work. So if you're not too worried about how it looks, that's a very cheap and easy option that you can go with. If you're after something a little bit more appealing to look at, you can buy upmarket acoustic panels, which are fully enclosed in a nice cloth, and you can match them with the color and decor of your room. If you go the route I did, which was to make your own acoustic panels, you can do this really inexpensively if you shop around and you get the right material. Getting some recycled or secondhand lumber, and also purchasing rock wool or other acoustic dampening insulation, you can easily make these for only a couple of hundred dollars. At the moment, I have taken down my acoustic panels because I need to place them. They're smaller because I use them to make movie posters. I'm going to actually place them on the wall over there and I'll show you now in the B-roll. And I'm going to place them one on top of the other and I'm going to make some plain ones for the other side. Next, we're going to speak about something that I've only learned about rather recently and that is repositioning your speakers. It may seem like an obvious thing because when you install your speakers, you find the place that you want them, you set them up and then off you go but small adjustments to the way that your speakers are facing, the distance that they are from the wall, and the position in the room generally will have a vast impact on how the sound comes to your ears. Repositioning your speakers is something that you can do very quickly and very easily in most cases. Like myself, I had my speakers facing the wrong way. I did not have them aimed at the main seating position. And while this may seem like an obvious thing, I had it more set up for the look of the speakers, where I'd like them in the room, rather than where they should be. Unfortunately, due to some other problems with the positioning of the speakers in my room that I have no control of, such as because they're a bookshelf speaker, and the same would be the same for a tower speaker, I couldn't put them at E height. So having them tilted up and slightly towed in has made a massive difference in how the acoustics of this room perform. There are inexpensive tools that you can get that can help you on this journey. And that includes an SPL meter or a decibel reader where you can tow the speakers into a specific point, play it back through your AVR once you've isolated that speaker, and then you can measure the reading. As you slowly rotate the speakers towards you or away from you, you'll be able to see how that affects the sound. I'll leave links down below to some inexpensive SPL readers, so check those out if you're interested. In some cases, you won't be able to change the way that your speakers are positioned because you've gone with in walls. However, in some cases like my speakers, where I have my Atmos and my height channels, which are the Klipsch CDT 2650C version 2s, and they have a directional tweeter. And I found by rotating that tweeter and aiming it at the seated position has made a big difference in how immersive the sound in this room is. So if you haven't tried repositioning your speakers, it's a really cheap and easy thing that you can do to see if it makes a difference. And using the tools that I mentioned, as well as any auto tuning that you have on your AVR, you may find that there is a big difference. This leads me to my next topic, and that is room correction. Now, what that means is using the built-in tools on your AVR, other things like a mini DSP, which is really popular at the moment, and I've learned about that on some of the other YouTube channels that I subscribe to, and I've seen some great results as well as my previous video where my subscriber, I did a tour of his room. I'll leave a card up there if you'd like to see a tour of his room. He has spent a lot of time calibrating his subwoofers using mini DSP, and he's had an incredible result with that. In my case, I've done two rim corrections, and each time there have been slight improvements. However, because I know that I still have some acoustic dampening issues in this room, I'm not going to bother running a third correction until I fix some of those issues. I highly recommend using the built-in tool and a calibrated microphone on your AVR 
to get that room dialed in. I know with my Pioneer AVR, even though it's a higher end of the Pioneer AVRs, it's very limiting in the fact that I can only set a global crossover, which I have set at the moment to 80 Hertz. Now, I would really like to have been able to set the crossovers on each of the speakers separately so that I could get the result that I wanted. However, this is just what I'm stuck with with my AVR. As I'm almost done with my acoustic treatment of the room, I will be ordering a mini DSP and a UMK1 microphone so I can dive into correcting my subwoofers because I have two subwoofers and I have a feeling that they may be fighting each other and I have noticed that when I have one subwoofer running I seem to have better bass in the room so again that ties into repositioning your speakers and I have done several repositioning of my subwoofers but they may need to have a slight delay between them to help balance out that sound. So now I'm gonna to turn to lighting, which is more to do with the visual elements of improving your home theater. Now this can be broken down into two things. One, controlling the ambient light that's coming in the room, especially if you have a projector. And two, we'll be discussing any kind of additional lighting that you may wish to add, which can change the ambience and therefore improve the overall look and feel of your theater. I know that when there's light coming in and you can see reflections that it can be quite distracting. If you have a dedicated home theater, one of the things that you want is to be totally immersed in what you're watching. And any light reflecting and bouncing off other surfaces in the room will really wreck the experience. That's why when I built this room, I knew from the outset that I wanted a sealed room and somewhere that I could control the light. I didn't want to be limited to watching movies at night. And this room with the shutters and also a nice solid core door and also dark paint. I was able to achieve a very dark room. So when everything is closed off, you won't be able to see anything. And then because I've gone with a low sheen matte black paint, I also don't get any light reflections. So when I'm watching a movie in here, all I'm engrossed in is what I see and what I can hear, which is exactly what you want when you've got a dedicated home theater. When I have my lighting turned on, this room looks completely different. I've used LifeX, which I've covered in many other videos. I'll leave a playlist up here. And when I installed these LifeX lights and these LifeX Z strips around my step tread and my front and underneath my rear recliner, I was able to control the look and the feel of this room in a very quick and easy way through my smartphone. It might not be for everyone, I understand that, but I know for myself, especially you can see now, I have a red glow in the room when I'm filming. And that's kind of like creates a nice warm atmosphere for when I'm filming my YouTube videos. And I found that since I did that, I have noticed an improvement in the quality of my videos. Now the fifth and final thing that we're gonna cover in this video is going with a smart remote. If you're in the dark and you don't have any smart lighting and you've got several devices, fumbling around for the remotes can be quite annoying. If you invest in a smart remote, you may be able to program almost all of your devices to work through that one remote. I was able to do it and I can tell you what, it is a fantastic way of being able to control any device in your home theater and even outside of your home theater as well. For example, you can have lighting outside and if all of your lights are off when you're in the theater, you may want to turn them on before you exit the theater. That's, that's a pretty cool feature that you can also achieve using a smart remote. The Logitech Harmony Elite, which is the one that I've got, has coverage for nearly every single device that I've ever owned. It does take a little bit of time to program everything in, especially if you want to program in some macros, but it's well worth the effort because the experience that you'll have in your theater is far more enjoyable when you can just press one button and it turns on your PlayStation, turns on your projector, it turns on your amplifiers. You can get ready to do whatever activity it is that you want to do with one press of a button. It's also great if you have it on the outside of your theater or towards the entrance of your theater because then you can just press a button or you can even program it with voice commands and you can say, turn on the home theater. And then whatever macro you have set with that, it can go on and do all the actions that you have programmed to that macro. Sky's the limit when you're talking about these things because depending on how far you want to go, if your devices are capable, you can do so much with them. I especially like the pause and play and the dimming and the brightening of lighting. That to me is the coolest thing that I've been able to do in my theater and has the biggest most impact on the enjoyment that I get, especially when I'm in the pitch black, I wanna pause the movie and I need to get up or grab something, the dim lights will come on and I'm able to go there without breaking my neck. If you like the video, smash the like button for me and check the links in the description for some of the things that I mentioned because it may help you out when it comes to buying some of the things that you're after. I've also left a link to our Discord community which is growing quite nicely and it's full of like-minded home theater enthusiasts where you can ask questions, leave comments and post photos of your home theater and you never know, you may get featured on my next home theater tour. So if you're interested and you want to grow and learn with us, consider joining our Discord community, links in the description. As my channel is growing, I have set up a merch store, so check the links for that if you'd like to buy any of the merchandise, it directly goes to supporting the channel, as well as my Patreon. 
I'm not pushing the Patreon too much just yet. Any contributions made to Patreon directly go back into the channel, which may include giveaways in the near future once the numbers increase. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy content like this, you'll catch me in the next video.